the word of God says, I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he proves that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. May God add his blessing to the reading. Amen. Thank you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. He goes on to say, as my father loved me, I also yes. have loved you. Yes. Abide in my love. Yes. If you keep yes. my commandments, yes. you will abide in my love, yes. just as I have kept my father's commandments yes. and abide in his love. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it mean to abide? You may be seated. The word abide means to wait for, to endure without yielding, as in to withstand, to bear patiently, as in to tolerate, to accept without objection, to remain stable or fixed, in a state, it means to continue. To abide means to continue or to sojourn. Brother Howard sojourned with us for months in his last visit. Amen. Jesus sojourns with us as believers. He abides with us. Amen. Over the course of the year, in the opportunities that the Lord has afforded me the privilege uh, to speak with to you, I've been on a single theme. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been on a single theme. And that is walking in the fullness of abundant, fruitful Christian living. Amen. Amen. Because I don't believe that just coming to church, as Sister Savage said earlier, and looking pretty, and then going home, and nothing ever changes, is what God intended for the church, amen? I don't believe that when we come into the house of God, and God is with us, and we are open to the things of the Spirit, that we should walk out of this place and be the same. And I don't believe that we are supposed to take what we've got and just be a nice little social club and not share the gift that God has given each one of us with a lost and a dying world. Amen. And I know that I am personally guilty of not taking more time to share my faith. And then I wonder, where are the miracles? Where are the things that we pray for? What is holding these things back? And it's because we are not, as a people, generally abiding in Christ. And furthermore, there are two abidings. The first is that we abide in him. But the second is that his word abide in us. So that's what I want to talk to you today. You see, because God is not a man that he should lie. 
And in all that we're dealing with, we've been trying to attempt to answer that question about why are we living beneath our privilege? God is not a man that he should lie. The word tells us that. We have documented proof that the word of God is true. Amen. Scientists have taken this book and pulled it apart and tried to find the, the uh, a, a incontinence, discontinued, um, confusion. They say that it conflicts, and then the closer they look at it, they find it doesn't conflict. That from beginning to end, it tells one story. Amen? From beginning to end, it's our redemption story. Hallelujah. It doesn't conflict. It's not confusing. Even in this hour, the computer, you've heard me talk about how computer scientists have taken this book and found a code that reveals prophetic words, the future, the past, and the current situation in a book that was written thousands of years ago. It remains the number one bestseller.